Nine schools have begun taking children's lunch payments, get this, by scanning their faces using facial recognition software. Well, the schools in North Ayrshire, who are launching this system today, claim it will speed up canteen queues and reduce the COVID-19 risk that will come with card and cash payments and fingerprint scanners. Mm, yes, but some parents and campaigners worry that it will normalise children uh, being biometrically surveilled and that students may not be informed about the privacy risks that are involved. Well, Guy Cocker is a technology and video games journalist and consultant and joins us now. Thank you for joining us this morning, Guy. Um, this feels, as a parent, uh, th th I don't like this at all. Um, I don't want my child having their face scanned. I don't know where that will end up. I don't know what kind of security systems will be in place and how that data will be used. Am I right to be as concerned as I am? Well, yeah, I think that's that's correct. I mean, um, there is a biometrics commissioner um, in the UK and previous biometrics commissioners have said that the rules and the laws and the protections around um, around personal data to do with your DNA um, and also your fingerprints, there are rules around that. So, so if you've taken, you know, if you, you give a DNA sample, by law, that has to be deleted within six months unless it has um, an ongoing legal concern. Whereas with, with facial recognition technology, the rules aren't the same. And so I think it is lagging in that particular area. I think that the argument that the schools, the nine schools in North uh, Ayrshire um, are using is that this is quicker. They've, they've got each of these schools has to serve around a thousand children within an hour with their school meals. They need to be able to pay for it quite quickly. I don't think that that argument really stands up when you when you think of other t contactless technologies, maybe against cash and, and giving change, that, that argument works. But really, with all of this stuff, you know, data is king in the world that we live now. And um, that's why Facebook is so valuable. Um, and really, w when you're taking facial recognition, you're creating a data point, which if you were to be charitable, I think you would say that might help schools understand which meals are being ordered and, and general trends and maybe even nudging them, uh, nudging kids to be more healthy. That might be one of the positive uses for that. But on the negative side, the real value of this data and, and these schools are working with a, with a private company on this facial recognition technology, it's in creating data points that can then be harvested for, for, for marketing purposes. It's, you know, it's, it's big companies being able to understand what food kids are eating and then being able to market to them more effectively. So, um, so I think, you know, if you're playing devil's advocate, there are, there are positives and negatives between these, uh, uh, this technology. Yeah, well, I mean, Jamie Oliver had already ruined school dinners as far as I was concerned. We don't need any other help going forward. <laughs> yeah, turkey twizzlers, I'll never forgive him. For never that. forgive him for that. Back off, Jamie. Anyway, well, gosh, let it go, let it go. Anyway, um, but, but seriously, you, you did name a couple of, or, or a way there, that essentially this could be used for marketing purposes. Just talk to me a bit about that, because, look, if my face is recognised in a dinner queue, you know, how can that lead to me being targeted for adverts? What could happen there? Well, it's just it's it doesn't even have to be um, uh, personalized. And this is this is, you know, big data at its finest. So so big data can be used to just spot. Let's just say every Thursday, a certain meal is being ordered, a certain treat is being ordered. And then the, the, the marketing, which is on your phone at all times, could in theory, in theory be linked to that big data. And again, give kids a push towards, you know, don't forget your your treat, your Thursday treat, for example. So it's it's being able to use that data at scale that's really the, the commercial application here. Um, this this technology has been used at festivals for a while. It was first used um, by the police, uh, by Leicester, Leicester Police, for the Download Festival uh, back in 2015. And you think about it, you know, I, uh, when I used to travel by uh, by airplane, I used to um, use the, uh, the, the electronic gate that would facially recognize you against your passport. But anyone that's used those as well would say that they're not very efficient and actually there was a study by the um uh, metropolitan police an independent study that found that actually the um the current systems that are being used are 81 percent inaccurate the current facial uh, recognition technology is 81 percent inaccurate so it's really you know it's, it's not the technology actually really isn't there to be really effective in policing but it's still being used to be able to um detect people as they're going into places like festivals or airport security so that um if there is an incident in a crowd people can be identified and, and traced so there's a there's a legal um application for it but yeah the, the school stuff i can understand the concerns around it you know privacy concerns around um children be just getting used to being surveilled you know i think that if you think about children and, and the way that they're they adapt to technology there, in theory, I would think a lot of a lot of kids would think, yeah, okay, yeah. I don't mind being facially tracked if that makes getting lunch quicker. Yeah. But actually, it's it's just getting used to that that, that is a problem. I think. 
Do, do you think it's quite coercive, actually? Because we're seeing this with the uh, vaccine passport in other countries, for example, where you need them to go to a shopping centre or to go grocery shopping. It's, the choice is there to not have the vaccine, but the, the price you pay is not being able to buy food. It, I, I see a parallel at, in here where, it's, where if a parent doesn't want their child being facially scanned, well, OK, that's well and good, you can refuse, but then will your child be able to get dinner like uh, everybody else? So it's quite coercive. Massive, isn't it? Quite sinister. Well, I think it should say that 97% of uh, children and parents have apparently agreed to use this um, technology in the um, uh, North Ayrshire example. But you're right, it's, it, it can be a slightly slippery slope, uh, this technology. I get all sorts of crazy news releases hitting my inbox. The latest one was um, one that is apparently more popular in Europe, which is having a um, NFC chip, so a payments chip implanted in the back of your hand, surgically implanted, so that in theory, if you forget your wallet or your phone, you can still pay for stuff while you're out. I can see that. I can see the use for that. But for me, as a 39-year-old, it feels slightly invasive and not something that I would want. But as you get younger people who get, get more used to, as I was saying, surveillance technology or sort of seamless ways to interact and, 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 and like I said, have a, have a chip implanted, I think they're more open to those ideas. And it's a sort of slippery slope, as you say, as you, as you have the need to be surveilled or passports or any of those sorts of things. Um, it can be a slightly slippery slope. So I understand privacy concerns around it. Hi, Cocker. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this morning and giving us that insight, technology and video games journalist and consultant.